to my presentation, Enriching Your Data Visualizations with Annotations in Plotly. My name is Reshma Sheikh, and I'm a statistician based in New York City. I am also the founder of Data Umbrella, a member of the triage team for Scikit-Learn, as well as a co-organizer for the New York City chapter of PyLadies. You can find me at Reshma S on Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn. The code for this presentation can be found in my GitHub repo at pyohio-plotly. Let's head over to the Jupyter Notebook now. For this, uh, for this presentation, I am using Plotly version 5.1.0, and these are the libraries that I need. I am importing Plotly Express over here. Okay. The data I'm using is the Johns Hopkins COVID-19 data, and for the sake of this presentation, I am using a subset of the data, which is information for India and the United States. This gives an idea of what the data frame looks like. Um, there's country, there's date, and the number of cases over time. Okay, so the first plot that I do is I assign an object figure. The data frame I'm using is called US data. My X axis is going to be the day of the case and my Y axis is going to be the daily case count for each day. I'm assigning a title of COVID-19 over time and notice that I see two separate curves. One represents one country, one the other, and I'd like to see it separately. How do I do that? Okay. So the way that I do that is there's a one more parameter I can add to my figure object, which is color equals country, and country represents, um, it's the column name for country. And notice that it separates the two by color. India is in blue and the United States is in red. Okay. The next thing that I'm going to do is notice how the canvas goes right to the edge. I just want to add a little bit of space over to the right. And the way that I do it is for the max axis, I'm just going to take the maximum of the X axis and just add 10 to it. And I'm going to assign a range of X to go from zero to my max axis. All right. And notice there's just a bit of space over there now. So, all right. The next thing, um, notice when I hover over the data, I have three variables because those are, those are the ones that I have uh, indicated in my figure object. What if I want to add some more variables? And I can do that by doing hover underscore data and I can add all of these other variables. The reason I'm adding these other variables is it gives me more insight into what is happening at each data point and this information is going to help me um, pick which points I want to annotate. Okay. I'm going to add my first footnote, okay. my first annotation. Notice that it shows up right over here, okay? And the way that I did it, which is the simplest one, which is fig.add underscore annotation, text equals, it's an F string, which is my Twitter handle, today's date and the source of the data. But by default, um, it appears over here, but really I want it, I want that footnote to be over here on the bottom left. How do I do that? The way that I do that is I move it from X zero to negative one, which is over here. I want to remove that arrow, which I say show arrow equals false. And I want to assign the font to a size 10 a color gray and, I'm, and I want to left align it. Okay. And notice that I have it across one line, but I want to put it across two lines. So this BR breaks it up into two lines. And voila, there we go. It's on two lines. It's gray. The font is smaller and the position is where I want it to be. For, if you get stuck, uh, check out the documentation on what um, the options are for um, the coding. Okay. Here are some dates that I want to add as annotations and they're of interest, which is when Thanksgiving was, when January 2nd was, which happened to be the highest recorded cases, and when the vaccine rollout happened in the United States. Okay. 
So to add my second annotation, right here I want to I want to indicate when Thanksgiving was, and it happened to be day 310, okay? And the way that I do that is I assign the X is 310. I assign Y is something over here. I can see it's about 250,000 or 200,000. Um, day 310, this is a line break, USA Thanksgiving holiday. Um, I can change the arrow color. I can assign the font to be red and change the size and align it left, which is what has happened again. Okay. The next annotation that I am adding is this one right here. And in, in, in this example, we have a border around it. We have the font, uh, the annotation is not in bold as it is here. And there's this translucent turquoise background. How do we make that kind of annotation? All right. If we go here, this is the location where we assign it at 347 and 310, so somewhere about here and over there, and that can, you know, can uh, fiddle with that as well. The F string, which is text, is breaking down. We have right here, we have a border color is black, the border width, and the border color, and the opacity. And this is the key where um, that translucent and the turquoise appears. Next annotation. In this example, I added um, a, a block of yellow to highlight a specific area in this region, the USA holiday season. And notice the increase in cases during the holiday season. How do we add that highlight section? This is how we do that. We, we, we indicate that X of zero that we're starting is 305 to 357, which is somewhere around there. And by default, it just goes all the way to the top. So it's really a block, okay? And because it's add V rectangle, which is why we don't have to specify the Y, it adds, the, it adds a rectangle. This is the text. This is the size of the font and black, and this right here, fill in color, shows that it's yellow and the opacity of it, okay? And, and so, you know, we can play around with it for different colors and different options as well. The next annotation that I'm going to show is this one right here, which is an example of adding a vertical line as well as a box um, in blue. And how do I do that? Well, I come here and I want to add the line at x equals 425 and um, up to 450,000. So it's from here all the way to the top. I am going to shift the, um, shift the text a little bit over to the left. Um, I, I don't, I'm not going to show an arrow here. So I do show arrow equals false. The border color is black. Okay, which is the box around it. The text is there. I can specify the size of the font as well as the color, and I can align it to the left. So there are a bunch of options on how you can do um, how you can do annotations, and these are just some of the examples. There's an option also for templates if you want to do templates and it's figure.update layout. This is um, an example of one, but you can specify template equals plotly underscore dark. And when I run this code, notice it gives a template. And so there's a bunch of templates that you can play with. These COVID-19 plots were inspired by a research paper that I worked on, um, publication of face masks against COVID-19. I'd like to thank the Pi Ohio organizers for organizing this fabulous event, and I would like to thank you for watching. You can find me at Reshma S on Twitter, GitHub, and LinkedIn. Thank you.